Okay, um, in this video we will talk about the slope formula, and that is great. So, give me one second while I find the pen I'm looking for. Okay, so the slope formula, um, do keep in mind this is on your star chart, so you don't have to memorize this. The slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You can see a little better. Um, so we get these x and y values obviously from ordered pairs. You'll have two ordered pairs, x, y, x, y. Okay, and these subscripts actually are just uh, helpful in naming which ordered pair they come from. So um, if I say that this is the first ordered pair, then I'll name it x1, y1. And that tells you that this x value and this y value from the formula come from this ordered pair, the first ordered pair. Um, same thing for the uh, next one. I'm trying to find a lighter colored. Okay, um, so we've got x2 and y2 coming from the second ordered pair then, x2, y2. Alrighty, <clears throat> um, this is just to recall if you have same signs being divided, the quotient is positive. And a positive line travels going up. Okay. If you have um, opposite signs, so like a positive divided by a negative or a negative divided by a positive, their quotient is negative and a negative line will travel going down. Um, when I talk about how it's traveling or how it's changing over time, um, going up or going down, that is the slope. Slope tells us um, how steep the line is, and it also tells us which direction the line is going. So if it's a positive slope, it goes up. If it's a negative slope, it goes down. Um, the next thing we have if we have a number dividing into zero, so we have zero divided by a number, then that is um, zero, and a zero slope is horizontal. <clears throat> I like to remember that because I can use the zero there, the zero slope line, to make a z. That part matches up. Okay, um, but if I'm dividing by zero instead, that's going to make an undefined line because we can't divide by zero. An undefined line is just a vertical line. And the way I remember that is I can make a U because that piece matches up. So if I can make a Z out of the line, it's a zero slope. If I can make a U out of the line, it's undefined. And then obviously if it's going towards, if it's going up towards the right, it's positive. And if it's going down towards the right, it's negative. Um, we're not gonna actually see the pictures of the slope um, today, but we will determine what the slope is between two points. So here are some examples, and just so I can get rid of this stuff up here on the camera and zoom in a little bit, I'm going to rewrite the slope formula. Slope is represented with the letter m, so I wrote m equals, now I need y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. I put little parentheses around all of these uh, variables, and I'll show you why I do that in just a moment. <coughs> so now I'm ready to zoom in a little bit. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We can see that a little bit better. Awesome. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label the ordered pairs x and y, x and y. And then I need to decide which one's going to be the first ordered pair and which one's going to be the second. So I'll say this is the first ordered pair, meaning that's going to be x1 and y1. That means this is going to be the second ordered pair, so x2 and y2. Now I'm rewriting the formula m equals, and instead of writing the y2 and the y1, the x2 and the x1, I'm just going to only leave the parentheses. So now I have parentheses minus parentheses over parentheses minus parentheses. Now, this first set of parentheses is in place of y2 from the formula. And y2 happens to be negative 3. So I'm going to put a negative 3 in that bubble. Okay. This second set of parentheses in the numerator on the right side of the minus sign is y1. So this set of parentheses is in place of y1. 
Well, we know that y1 is 5, so I can put a 5 in that set of parentheses. Okay, the denominator on the left side of the minus sign has parentheses in place of x2. Well, we know that x2 is 4. So I'll put a 4 in those parentheses. Minus um, this last parentheses on the right side of the minus sign and the denominator is in place of x1. And we know that x1 is 1. So we'll put a 1 in that set of parentheses. <clears throat> After we have this, we're ready to just type it in on the calculator. So um, we're going to do that. I don't think my computer is screen recording right now, so I'm going to try and use this on my phone. Hey, it shows up just fine. Okay. So um, I'm going to need to first type in um, a fraction. I want to type a fraction. So I'm going to hit the division symbol. And then I need parentheses, that's under the x, open parentheses. My number is negative 3, close the parentheses, a minus sign, okay, and then open parentheses for the next number, 5. That's y2 minus y1. Um, now I'm ready to type in the denominator, so I'll click there. I need the parentheses, 4 minus 1. And we get negative 2.6 repeating. Negative 2.6 repeating is a slope. Um, more often than not, we usually prefer slope to be written like a fraction instead of decimals. Um, and that will make more sense later. Um, but if we think about it, the formula is given in a fraction form. So if we're given a fraction form, we want to use our answer as a fraction provide our answer as a fraction. So I'm going to click on the little fraction bubble right by where I was typing. And now I know that um, whatever I was typing in is the same as negative 8 thirds. So I can say that m is negative 2.6 repeating, or I can say that m is negative 8 thirds. <coughs> because this is a negative slope, I know that the line open or uh, travels going down. Okay, and so I know the slope of the line that goes through those, through those two points, and I know how the line looks already. So I know a lot about the line, and um, that's, that's it for slope formula. So I'm going to go look at example B now. <clears throat> so I'm going to rewrite the formula, m equals bubble minus bubble over bubble minus bubble. And in those bubbles, I'm just looking to replace them with the y and x values, which I get from the two ordered pairs going to need to label those two ordered pairs so I know where to put what. Um, and I do want to show you it doesn't matter how you label um, as long as we're consistent. And by consistent, I mean if I say that 3 is x2, then 9 has to be y2. The subscripts by x and y have to match in the same ordered pair. Um, since I've already used x2 and y2, now I'm going to use x1 and y1. <coughs> and I'm ready to plug in the formula now. So um, remember the slope formula has y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, That is the slope formula. So this first bubble is in place of y2. y2 we've labeled as 9. So I'm going to put a 9 there. And then y1. y1 we've labeled as 6. We'll put a 6 in its place. x2 is 3. We'll put a 3 in its place x1 is 5, we'll put a 5 in its place. And now we can type this in on our calculator. Okay, um, this is really dark now. Alrighty, so we've got fraction, so we're going to hit the divide sign, not the 9, the divide. And then I need open parentheses, open parentheses, 9 minus 6 and then in the denominator we need 3 minus 5. 3 minus 5. Okay, and we've got negative 1.5 as the slope and that's okay if I want the slope in decimal form, but remember 
um, the formula has given us a fraction, so we probably want to make a fraction in our answer unless we're specifically asked for decimals. So I'm just going to convert that by clicking on the little fraction sign off to the side. Negative 1.5 is the same as negative 3 halves. Okay. Um, since the slope here is negative, I know that this opens going down. I say open. Um, the line is traveling going down. Okay. And those are some examples of the slope formula. Okay. Um, looking at practice one through four, we did number one and three in class together. <clears throat> and then two and four were your homework. Really, it was your classwork because you had so much time to work on it. <clears throat> but if you didn't finish two and three in class, that did become your homework. So looking at uh, number one, you'll have m equals, and then you'll fill in the formula. m equals for number three, you'll fill in the formula. Okay, take a minute and pause the video and try to fill in the formula on your own. And that is also what I'm going to do. I'm pausing my video, so in about a second, you'll just see all of the numbers magically appeared. Okay, um, here are the numbers magically, magically appeared out of the video. Hopefully you did the same. Okay, so we've got um, 4 minus 2 over negative 9 minus negative 9. What I want to point out here, it's important that uh, the ordered pairs line up. The 4 and the 9, sorry, the 4 and the negative 9 should be um, across from each other, and the 2 and the negative 9 should be across from each other. You can see that the ordered pairs line up. So 4 and negative 9 or negative 9 comma 4 was x2 and y2. So this was the second ordered pair and the first ordered pair. After you have this all typed or uh, plugged in correctly, you're ready to type this in on the calculator. So let me get my calculator out. <coughs> okay, and now we're typing in. We need a fraction, so I'll hit the divide sign. And then in the numerator, we've got to have open parentheses, 4 minus, oops, close the parentheses, minus 2 in parentheses. We want to use the parentheses just in case we have those negative signs attached to the numbers because sometimes when we see minus negative, you guys get confused and then we make some errors. So if we have parentheses around the numbers, that's just a really good visual of the number is supposed to be whatever's in the bubble. And then over negative 9 minus negative 9. Okay, and our calculator says undefined. That's making sense because we've got a number minus itself in the denominator, and any number minus itself is 0. So we have a 0 in the denominator, and a 0 in the denominator means it's undefined. So the how I would show you my answer for this is that m is just undefined. Now, um, because it's undefined, we know that this, the line is a vertical line. If the slope is undefined, then the line being shown was vertical. Um, that was for number one, actually. Number two is not undefined. Sorry, number three. Number three has a different value. So let's look at number three. Okay, so I've got this. Um, we need to type in two minus two for the numerator. So I'll hit the divide sign. I need the divide sign to get my fraction. And then I have two minus two, parentheses, 2 minus 2, and then in the denominator we need 
negative 3 minus 4. Negative 3 minus 4. Um, parentheses. Okay. Now uh, our calculator is giving us 0, and let's think about why that makes sense. To have a slope of 0, the numerator has to be 0. Well, the numerator is 2 minus 2, and any number minus itself is 0, so this does make sense. So the slope is 0, which means we have a horizontal line. Okay. Um, number 2 and number 4 were homework. Now I'm going to give you guys the answers here. For number 2, the answer was negative 3 fifths, and for number 4, the slope was undefined. That is all I have for this video. So um, if you have questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, Schoology email, drop a comment. You know how to do it. Thanks.